right now on five on your side at 10. Boy, the strong wind gusts continue tonight and tomorrow. Then the thrust to much warmer air for the weekend. Thieves caught on camera breaking into an animal shelter. Tonight, the search for the crooks who stole medicine, electronics, and even leftovers. Our top story, a stash of stolen power tools, appliances, and bicycles recovered from a South City home. The house was loaded with just all kinds of stuff. Tonight, the push by police to get those items back into the right hands. And investigators believe it's all part of a suspected burglary ring. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Kelly Jackson. Police raided a house in South City last Tuesday and arrested three people only on Five in Your Side tonight. Robert Townsend talked to a neighbor who says he saw it all and he joins us live outside police headquarters. Kelly and Mike, police tell me they recovered thousands of dollars worth of stolen items. Get this from that one house. A trail of tools, a heap of home appliances, lots of lumber, and plenty of personal objects. Those are just some of the more than 100 stolen goods St. Louis Police Department's South Patrol Burglary Squad says it found inside this Ellendale home last Tuesday morning. I saw bicycles, uh, air conditioner, uh, heater combinations, ladders, tires. This neighbor asked us to not show his face. He says armed officers and SWAT team members pulled up and swarmed the house in the 2700 block of Hermitage. The house was loaded with just all kinds of stuff. The police loaded up the big box truck and they said that they would probably have to come back with a couple more. Neighbors say police spent several hours packing up the items they say were stolen from homes, garages, businesses, and storage units. Neighbors also tell us for more than a year, they complained about the suspicious activity and possible drug dealing here. There's just a lot of traffic coming in and out and uh, a lot of activity in the backyard as far as moving stuff around. People passed out in cars. Police arrested Gage Lutman, pictured here in a white t-shirt, the male homeowner and a woman. Just last week, Lutman was charged in several other burglaries and wanted for possibly 25 more. Now there's big relief. The whole neighborhood is excited. After the big bust, arrests and the house is condemned. We just look at each other and just give everybody the thumbs up. Now, police are asking anyone who thinks their stolen items might be in that big seizure to email them. You can find a link right now on KSDK.com. Live downtown, Robert Townsend, five on your side. Developing tonight, about two hours ago, an 80 year old man was rushed to the hospital after being shot in the chest. It happened on Vandeventer near Cottage Avenue in North St. Louis. No word on the man's condition. We are still waiting to hear back from police on what led to the shooting and if there are any suspects. It's a windy night across the St. Louis region. There's even been a few stray rain showers. Scott is off tonight. Weather first meteorologist Jim Castillo is here with what we can expect overnight and details on a big weekend warm up. Yeah, it's a huge weekend warm up in the 80s. We'll get there. A warm front comes our way Saturday, but we still have some wind gust out there this evening. I've seen the wind die a little bit St. Louis to Chesterfield, but then you look at St. Charles, still some gusts near 30. Same with Alton and Flora over 30 miles an hour. So it's 55 degrees right now. We're headed to the 40s. It's clear those showers are over with. It is still a little on the breezy side. You can see those wind gusts tonight over 30 miles miles an hour. Uh, by the way, the rainfall that we had ending this morning, really over the past 36 hours, St. Louis 1.26, Deloge 2.02, Freeburg, Illinois 1.76. So a good soaking rain, but coming this weekend, plenty of sunshine. And this is Sunday. We have the St. Louis City SC game. Kickoff is at 345, 84 degrees, and that sets the stage for thunderstorms next week. I'll time those out coming up in just a few minutes. Tonight, leaders at an East St. Louis animal shelter want to know who would break in after hours and steal from them. The crime overnight was all caught on camera. Brent Solomon is just back after talking with the nonprofit, which helps low income pet owners. Well, Kelly, I'm about to show you those surveillance images in just a moment. The folks over at Gateway Pet Guardians are hoping someone will know who the bold thieves are so police can put a stop to it. 
In the midst of the sounds of dogs barking and little kitties answering when greeted. Oh, there's Harry. Hi, Harry. Is a sense of shock among the vibrant team that keeps this place going. It puts an eerie feeling in your stomach um, to have people that don't belong here in here with your animals that are vulnerable at the time. It was just before 3 Thursday morning. Take a look at surveillance video of these men making their way into the Gateway Pet Guardian Shelter here on North 15th Street in East St. Louis. We do have one video of the guy like kind of tiptoeing down the back hallway. One of them with a can in his hand. But they like ate food, drank energy drinks out of the refrigerator. And then made off with the goods. A laptop used for note taking. Where we report any, you know, behavior concerns, any illnesses. So that's used regularly and throughout the day from our animal care team. So we're going to have to replace that. And drugs meant for animals. Trazodone, which is a sedative, um, gabapentin, which is an anti-inflammatory, um, and then uh, carprofen, which is like your, our equivalent of 800 milligram ibuprofen. So it doesn't have a good street value and you're certainly not going to get high on it. It is why leaders here aren't sure why the thieves felt the need to target them. If you're desperate enough to break in somewhere and then you know, you're, you're hungry. Of course, I feel bad for you. However, you know, we can't go about it that way. And so we have some things that we're going to do on our part in terms of additional security things that we're going to put in place. We're a nonprofit animal shelter, and so that stuff is going to cost money. After five years of being in East St. Louis, the shelter says they haven't had any problems and they love the sense of community that they have there. They wonder if it was outsiders who did this. They're now fundraising to replace what was lost. You can find that info on KSDK.com. A Shell gas station in downtown St. Louis is closing because of crime. This is part of a settlement after two lawsuits were filed against the business, calling it a nuisance property. Police say the gas station had nearly 600 calls for service in the last two years. Today we talked to one of the residents who helped file one of the lawsuits more than two years ago. It has just been an unresolved uh, nuisance that has burdened downtown St. Louis until um, its impending closure uh, this summer. The gas station is set to close by August 1st. No other gas stations or convenience stores are allowed to be built there in the future. Tonight, the world is still reacting to the death of a football star turned controversial figure. O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76. His family says he passed away after a battle with prostate cancer. His football, acting, and broadcast career will forever be overshadowed by the trial of the century. In 1994, he was charged and later acquitted in the brutal murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. He was later found liable for their murders. We talked to Bob Costas today, who worked alongside O.J. and even visited him in jail before his murder trial. People have many chapters in their lives. Uh, it's hard to find anyone with two chapters so starkly different. O.J. the football hero, O.J. the beloved celebrity, and then O.J. Uh, the accused murderer in uh, the criminal case and convicted in a certain sense in the civil case. Most of the Goldman family civil judgment against Simpson has reportedly not been paid. Ron Goldman's father, Fred, released a statement today saying it's no great loss to the world. It's a further reminder of Ron being gone. Simpson was ultimately sent to prison for a robbery in Las Vegas in 2008. He served nine years of a 33 year sentence before being paroled in 2017. Tomorrow's voter tomorrow voters in Bridgeton will head to the polls for a special election to elect a new mayor. Two candidates are on the ballot. Both currently serve on the city council. Randy Hine has been on the council for 12 years and is currently serving as acting mayor. Don Hood has served the city for decades as first a police officer, then chief of police and assistant to the mayor. Now, the special election is being held two months after the death of Mayor Terry Briggs. The win will reserve the remaining three years of his term. A new marijuana dispensary is holding a grand opening tomorrow in Soulard, and it's located just feet from a school. Kind Goods is located on South Broadway, right across the street from Lift for Life Academy. Students have protested this dispensary and another opening nearby. The city of St. Louis opted out of a Missouri state law requiring dispensaries to be 1,000 feet away from schools. 
Tonight, the screening of a documentary that shines the spotlight on the black maternal health crisis. Sister Doula follows the work of Kansas City nurse Hakima Payne, a Missouri doula who is working to educate and help reduce the mortality rate for black mothers and babies in the state. Filmmaker Emmett Williams followed Payne for five years as she worked to raise awareness about the health disparities among black families. St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones attended tonight's event saying federal funds are helping further the cause. I am in a unique position to be able to uh, fund and support this work. We've been able to direct some of our American Rescue Plan Act funds to support doulas, uh, to support maternal health, um, and we are happy and glad to do that. Mayor Jones also declared today as Black Doula Day in the city of St. Louis. A beloved high school girls basketball coach is recovering at home tonight, less than a month after suffering a heart attack during the state tournament. The family of Dan Rolfus announced today that he has been discharged from Barnes Jewish Hospital. They add he still faces some challenges and they thanked everyone for their support. Rolfus is the longtime head coach at Incarnate Word Academy. He fell ill after the team's semifinal game last month in Columbia. The next night, they went on to win their seventh straight state title. I think they're happy we are gone and thought we'd keep our mouths shut. Claims of neglect at a skilled nursing facility. Tonight, the I-Team is hearing from more concerned families after its investigation. We heard her screaming in pain, and we went in, and we said, Mom, are you okay? The complaints we've uncovered and the response from the facility. It's still windy tonight, and that'll continue into Friday. It looks dry for the weekend with summer-like temperatures, but by the start of next week, a chance of storms. New tonight, the I-Team follows up on the death of Dennis Price at Del Mar Gardens West. A report struck a nerve with multiple family members and residents at the skilled nursing facility. They say they had similar complaints, and tonight, our Christine Byers brings us some of their stories and how the facility is responding. Twin sisters Melissa Smith and Teresa Baumkamp, Norm Polsky, and Michelle Gralnick belong to a club they wish they were never a part of. They all have loved ones who have died while in the care of Delmar Gardens West. I think they're happy we are gone and thought we'd keep our mouths shut. The twins contacted the I-Team in 2023 after their 54-year-old brother Dennis died from what they believe was neglect. A state investigator concluded, I was unable to verify a regulatory violation had occurred based on the lack of sufficient evidence. Since then, about a dozen people have contacted the I-Team or the sisters sharing their allegations of mistreatment at the town and country facility. I've had residents call me and I hear aides in the hallway with loud music dancing and laughing while residents are yelling for help. And that is since the story came out. Norm Polsky's mother died in June. You're feeling safer now to come forward. Oh, yes, 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 um, because I don't, yeah, there's no repercussions. Hilda Polsky was 104 years old. And she was a spitfire. Her son is now haunted by how she spent her last six years at the facility. We heard her screaming in pain, and we went in, and we said, Mom, are you okay? And she said, uh, no, I'm really in pain. And so I said, why don't you call the nurse? And she said, I've been calling the nurse for half an hour and nobody has come in the room. His family, including his daughter, who is a police officer, called the Department of Health and Senior Services hotline twice. Just got to the point where we couldn't take it anymore. They said everything was fine. He says he didn't keep the reports. It was a joke. It was a joke. Michelle Gralnick knows the feeling. Her parents died in Delmar Gardens West Care three years ago. Her mother had multiple sclerosis. Call lights and the telephones were physically moved out of my mom's reach so that she could not communicate. She has medical records showing her mother went septic multiple times from pressure wounds that develop when a patient isn't moved enough. She would try to call the nurse's station and the phone would be answered Domino's or Burger King trying to make her think that she had dialed the wrong number. The experience changed um, the course of Michelle's feet, life. Um, now she's a resident's rights advocate for people living in nursing homes. If this was happening to my parents, who had three adult children in town all looking out for them, then 
what would be happening to those residents who didn't have loved ones who were there alone and isolated, and that just fueled me. Delmar Gardens West sent a lengthy statement to the I-team, which read in part, Delmar Gardens West exceeds state and national averages when it comes to staffing. It said only one of Michelle Grelnick's complaints was substantiated by the state and claimed Norm never called the state hotline. He still can't shake what he says he saw when his mother was there. They were supposed to help the people eating, and I didn't see that going on, especially with my mom. The I-team found 17 complaints the state has investigated against Delmar Gardens West since 2016. The most recent, in June of 2023, the same month Norm's mother died, shows the facility failed to ensure three residents didn't run out of their medications, that their families and physicians were notified about it, and to ensure one resident had a device they needed to exercise their lungs. Records show the issues were corrected in July of 2023. It doesn't surprise the twins. Because we really thought by coming forward after our brother died, there would be a difference. Christine Byers, five on your side. Now to read more of the response from Delmar Gardens West, you can look for this story in the As Seen on TV section of KSDK.com. And if you have a tip for Christine and the five on your side I-team, you can leave a voice message at that number, 314-444-5231, or you can just send an email to tips at KSDK.com. And all calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. Well, meteorologist Jim Castillo in for Scott tonight. He is here with the weather first forecast and going to have a warm up this weekend. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, average high is in the 60s. Can you I mean 80s for days. Now it's going to come to an end and I'll let you see that in the 10 day forecast coming up. But uh, I'm excited about it. You know, it's probably going to get a little bit too hot in a couple of days. I'll show you those coming up too. right now. Looking down Market Street, the arch. What a beautiful shot. City SC takes the pitch as we get into Sunday and not one of those really warm days, but we have to get through this wind tonight. Some of those wind gusts over 30 miles an hour. At times I've seen the wind even in St. Louis down to about seven miles an hour, but the gusts were over 40 in spots. 55 degrees right now, but then lows tonight, not freezing, but in the 40s, so mid 40s in most areas, couple spots in the upper 40s. And that wind stays with us tomorrow. So here's this wind machine. It's right around the Great Lakes right here, Chicago there. And right around it, you're getting that westerly and northwesterly wind. A couple showers and storms still popping up in Indiana and even just on the northern fringe of our viewing area. But tomorrow is expected to be very sunny with high temperatures at about 70 and that northwest wind 15 to 25 gusts to 35 miles an hour. Then we get into Saturday. Here's a warm front. It starts to push through the entire area. So below that warm front, you're in the 80s, Springfield, Missouri, Columbia, St. Louis, and then even on Sunday, 85 degrees and really looking west. Not much is going on. Here's a dry line uh, pushing through Kansas and into Oklahoma, and uh, the moisture isn't there yet. But as we get into late Monday night and into Tuesday, that chance of severe weather starts to ramp up a little bit. We'll see how this comes together. We'll keep you up to date on this throughout the weekend coming up. The future cast showing the first chance of showers and storms will be very late Monday night and into the overnight hours early on Tuesday, and then another chance in the afternoon and evening on Tuesday uh, for some potential severe weather. All right, here's the weather almanac 70 today for that high 52 for the low, but boy, that rain even 24 hours ago, a soaking rain moved through here one and a quarter inches in St. Louis. Flowers got a lot to drink for sure. 10 day forecast showing those 80s. There they are all the way through next week until Friday. And then next weekend we're in the 60s. So a big difference. And you know, that's that's closer to average. Yeah. So we have at least a week of summer but temperatures. It, it looks like a great weekend. Yeah, Jim, thanks. Yes. Sports with Frank is next. Mike, they're playing golf to win a green jacket at Augusta. But last week, a local girl was already victorious in Augusta. That story, plus the Billikens winning in recruiting and the Cardinals getting a key player back. This Five on Your Side sports report is sponsored by Tele Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. The Cardinals had the day off, and when they resume tomorrow night in Arizona, they will welcome back Lars Newtbar. He's been out since early March with fractured ribs.
They need some offense out of this outfield, too. Two combined homers from the outfielders. By the way, Tyler O'Neill has six for the Red Sox. However, the Cardinals are getting some unexpected offense out of their 23-year-old Ivan Herrera. He blasted one yesterday. Has three homers on the season. The only guy with a higher OPS on the team is fellow catcher Wilson Contreras. 432 feet, 112 miles per hour. Your furthest, Ivan? Yeah, 114, I think, is my best. 114, okay. like 455. Like, prepare for any pitch and, and stay back on that chain, yeah, and mm -hmm. kind of crush it a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, just a little. Josh Schertz will be our guest on Sports Plus Sunday night. A few tidbits. He and Gibson Jimerson had lunch, and Gibson will likely be coming back to play for the Billikens. The coach wants a team of players 6 feet 4 to 6 feet 10, and he will have four players 6, 10, and above making visits to SLU over the next few weeks, including Robbie Avila, one of the most talked about players in America last year. 17 points, seven boards, and four assists a game for the man nicknamed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This coach-player relationship is a strong one, and I'm betting it continues. Not the quickest, uh, but his mental quickness is so elite, his passing, his skill, uh, and then, you know, the more I got to spend time with him in the recruiting process, I told this to, to our staff, I said, you know, I knew he was a guy you could build an offense around, but he's actually uh, the type of guy you can build an entire program around because of who he is as a young man. To Augusta, Bryson DeChambeau was on fire in round one of the Masters, a 7 under 65 to grab the lead. But one shot back was Scotty Scheffler. Out of the sand on 12, this is magic. A bogey-free 66. Tiger Woods birdied the first hole and was rock steady. Finished one under par after 13 holes when darkness suspended play. He has 23 holes on Friday. Let's hear from the leader. I mean, I'm trying to win every single golf tournament. So, yeah, it's been severely disappointing, especially with how well I love this golf course, love... Uh, the patrons love the members of the golf course conditions, everything about it. It's something I've dreamed of, of always winning my entire life. At the end of this weekend, someone will walk away from the Masters with a green jacket. But one local golfer already has her hardware from Augusta. Corey Miller has the story. Eureka's Madison Pyatt has grown up on the golf course. I used to love just playing in the bunkers and seeing the difference between the greens and the rough. And she's been a natural from the time she was around three and a half years old. I still remember the first day that I taught her how to chip. She made three out of her first ten chips, the first time she'd ever chipped in her life. With the driver, forget about it. She probably outdrives you. Her normal drives 225, 230. This past week at Augusta National Golf Course in Georgia, Madison was masterful. From a pool that started out as thousands of kids across the country, Madison took home the Drive, Chip, and Putt Championship for her seven and nine year old age group on the biggest stage in golf. Way to go, Madison. I was so surprised and excited. My body was just filled with joy. I was really nervous, but my dad helped me just stay calm and just talk to me normally. And then I got up and did what I had to do. Now, Madison has memories and trophies for a lifetime and a few more autographs to sign these days. Good to see you. Good job. Thank you. And while she does have big goals, it all comes back to spending time with her dad as her caddy. Probably win the women's amateur, LPGA, and most of all, I just want to stay with my dad. <laughs> Love you, baby. Love you. Wow. Those sweetheart. Oh my goodness. Awesome. And those hugs. Yeah, she's so oh, poised. That special wow. father-daughter bond. I got a feeling we may be covering her for years to come. Yeah, yes. oh, well, that'd be great. That's Can good. I ask how concerned you are about the lack of power by the Cardinals outfield? Yeah, well, Newt Barr will add something. But here's the thing. is There's never been a team in baseball that could have three consecutive seasons without an outfielder hitting 20 home runs. I mean, this thing was supposed to be addressed last offseason, and now 
you know, Jordan Walker's off to a slow start. Newt Barr got hurt. Edmund, I mean. Yeah, it's concerning. Yeah, it really sure. is. So All we right. should be concerned about the offense. Frank, thanks. Well, starting tomorrow, baseball fans can catch a new one-of-a-kind attraction at Westport Plaza. We'll tell you about it after this. All right, starting tomorrow, baseball fans can catch a new one-of-a-kind attraction at Westport Plaza. It's the Rawlings Experience, which features a display of Gold Glove Awards and other baseball memorabilia. There's also interactive experiences today in St. Louis. We'll be live there tomorrow morning with a sneak peek. And Pringles is teaming up with Crocs for a new line of clogs, wow. slides, and charms. There's also the classic Crush Boot, which includes a holster for your chips, of course. Huh? Pringles is also releasing a limited edition flavor, Crocktail Party. It features sweet and spicy flavors of watermelon and chili lime. How do lime. Pringles and Crocs go together? I don't... <laughs> you gotta like, have them on your side at all times. Yes, yeah, with that little holster, Pringles Sketch holster. Sketchers and Cheetos. We'll just put those together. <laughs> Sounds good. That's our new idea. There you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show is next. Have a great tomorrow.